welcome back to my YouTube channel. We are going to be reading Lesson 2, Ancient India, Religions of Ancient India. And this topic is important and a little interesting because their two religions are Hinduism and Buddhism. And they go hand in hand and um, they're very interesting and they're completely different than anything that we've covered so far with the Jews, Islam, or with our Christianity, which are all monotheistic. These are polytheistic religions, so that means that they worship multiple gods. But you've probably heard of some of their beliefs, like karma, reincarnation, uh, nirvana. These are some things that um, originate from the religions of ancient India. So, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start with our first page. Um, our guiding question is how do religions develop? And our terms to know are Hinduism, Brahman, man, Brahman, reincarnation, Dharma, karma, Buddhism, Nirvana, and Jainism. Okay, and you can read over these. Hinduism is a major religion that all souls are part of one universal spirit and you're like spending your whole life trying to get back to the universal soul and you do that because like you're going to go into reincarnation over and over again until you're good enough to be part of the whole soul um buddhism is a belief in inner peace and so it, it's part of hinduism or you can just practice buddhism either one so you've got your timeline at the bottom there um, where, where Hinduism is practiced by the Aryans. So you've got the Harpins who have left. We've got that Aryan race that have come in. And let's do the first part. Put a check mark next to each term that you know. For every word that you check, write a short des description or definition. Sanskrit, the Vedas, Varnas, Guru, Untouchables. So you should know some of those from the past, in fact, you should know all of them from the past lesson. So you might want to take a minute to write down some def quick definitions. Those are vocabulary words from page 105, most of them, okay? All right, going on to the next page. The origins of Hinduism. Ready? Here we go. Hinduism is one of the oldest religions in the world. It grew from the faith of the Aryans. Hinduism was formed when the Aryan religion combined with ideas from other Indian people. Hindus believe in one great spirit called Brahman. They also believe that all living things and even the gods are part of the Brahman. Hindus believe in one... Oh, Hindus believe that a person's soul will eventually join Brahman. Before that can happen, however, a soul must live many lives, even some as animals. The idea of living many lives in many different forms, one after another, is called reincarnation. According to Hinduism, if people do their duties of their caste, which means like where they are in society, then they will have a better next life they must follow dharma or their personal duty so if you are a warrior then you have to do your warrior best to be able to become the priest if you are a farmer you have to do your farmer's best to become a warrior that type of thing so like you start off where you are and you do really well and you can move up um Number one says, fill in the blank with the words from this section. Hindus believe that the soul goes through blank. A person is born into blank. And if they follow the blank of their caste, they make good blank. Then the cycle starts again. So that's coming from here and here. So like the Hindus believe that the soul goes through reincarnation. A person is born into a caste. And if they follow the of their caste and they make good karma 
then they can have a better life. Okay, describing how do Hindus believe their souls will eventually join Brahman? Karma is a result of how a person lives. If you live a good life and do your duty, you have good karma and eventually you will reach Brahman. Wink, wink. Number two. If you have bad karma, you will be reborn into a lower caste or as an animal and you will remain in that cycle of reincarnation. This belief of dharma and karma mean that people have to obey the rules of their caste because that is where they have to stay until their next lifetime. The idea of reincarnation gives them their only hope. So they don't believe in like heaven. They're like, look, if I do good right now, then look, I'm going to go into a better situation next time. I'm a cat right now, but you know, I'll do good. I'm going to be a person next time. If I don't do good, then I'm going to be a cat or a mouse or a mosquito or something like a snake or something, you know. Or a, someone who lives a poor, crappy life, you know? So, yeah, do good and good will happen to you in this life and in the next life, all right? The rise of Buddhism. So, number three, how did Hinduism affect the way Indians live day to day? That is in that part. So, like, you're going to do well in life in order to receive a good reincarnation. So, day to day, I'm going to try to be a good person and try to do good stuff and do my job and do what I'm supposed to do. Prince Siddhartha Gautama was born about 563 BC. Siddhartha was wealthy, married, and had a son. One day, he left the palace and was shocked to see that most people were poor. He asked himself why people suffered. Next page. To search for answers, he left his family and lived alone. Legend says that Siddhartha meditated under a tree. Finally, he came to understand the meaning of life. This is called enlightenment. Who was the founder of Buddhism? Siddhartha spent the rest of his life teaching people about his discovery. People called him the Buddha, which means the enlightened one. His lessons about life and suffering are called Buddhism. The Buddha taught that everyone should stop wanting fame, money, and worldly things. They should would they then they would reach nirvana, a feeling of perfect peace and happiness. Number five, how does a Buddhist get to nirvana? The Buddha said that the only way to stop desiring things was to follow the eightfold path, the Buddhist right, rules for right living. The Buddha did not agree with the caste system. He told that all people could reach nirvana. This made Buddhism very popular in the lower castes and the untouchables. Because, I mean, they could be an enlightened person and could reach heaven or happiness without having to be reborn over and over again. Okay? And you're still doing good. So, what is the Eightfold Path? It is the rules for right living. The Eightfold Path is in the box. Number one, to know and understand the four noble truths. Number two, to give up worldly things and do no harm others. Do not harm others. Number three, tell the truth. Do not gossip and do not speak badly of others. Number four, do not commit evil acts such as killing, stealing, or living an unclean life. Number five, do rewarding work. Number six, work for good and oppose evil. Number seven, make sure your mind keeps your senses under control. Number eight, practice meditation in the world and to bleh, practice meditation to see the world in a new way. The, the next paragraph says Buddha taught his ideas for more than 40 years. When he died, his, dis his disciples could not agree about what his message really meant. They split into two groups. One was the Theravada Buddhism. Theravada means teachings of the wise men. It says that Buddha was a great teacher, but not a god. Theravada Buddhism spread south and east. It also became popular in Indochina. That is like under China. The other kind of Buddhism is a Mahayana. 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 Mah, mah, 
Mahayana, Mahayana Buddhism. It says that the Buddha is a god. Mahayana Buddhism also favor also also honor Bahahiya, Bahistavas, who are enlightened people who choose not to go to heaven even though they could. Instead, they help they stay on earth to help others reach Nirvana. Some of these Indian words really get me tongue tied, y'all. Like for real. So number seven was the difference. Well, one of them believes that Buddha is a god, and one of them believes that Buddha was a teacher. So there you go. Num next page. Next page. Next page. Religions of ancient India continued. In Tibet, Mahayana. Mahayana. Maha they don't have like the pronunciation like the textbook does. Mahayana Buddhism mixed with Hinduism and Tibet's own religions. Buddhist leaders called Lamas led the government. Tibetans believe Lamas were reincarnations of the Buddha. So we've got this Buddhist situation that has spread and then in Tibet it kind of morphed into a theocracy type thing where the leaders of the religion were also leaders of the government. Today, very few Buddhists live in India. Buddhism is widely practiced in Southeast Asia and East Asia. So Hinduism kind of took hold in India where Buddhism spread east into China and, and um, into Tibet. There are about 376 million Buddhists in the world today. So there's a graph there that gives you a comparison of the two Buddhism types. Number eight said, where is Buddhism practiced today and in what forms? Well, you've got the Mahayan, the Theravada, and you've got how many right there in that last paragraph I read. Another religion also came into India at this time. It is called Jainism or Jainism? Jainism? Its main teacher was Mahar, Mahavir, Mahavira, Mahavira, Mahavira's title was the Jina or the Conqueror. His followers are called Jains. Because of Jainism, much of Jainism is like Buddhism. Both taught that people should stop wanting worldly things. So stop wanting the Xbox, stop wanting new shoes. Like you should be happy with what you, with the bare necessities, okay? Their goal was to stop the process of being reborn and reach Nirvana. Jainism is, has one main teaching, never harm any living creature. The name of this teaching is Ahimsa. Ahimsa means that a person should not even kill insects or worms. Century, centuries later, in the early 1900s, an Indian man came from named Mohandas Gandhi led a movement to free his nation from the rule of the British. Instead of using weapons, Gandhi followed the example of Ash Ash Ahimsa. Ahimsa. He and his followers used nonviolent ways of protesting. Through peaceful ways, the nation of India gained its independence. And you're going to watch a video tomorrow that kind of goes more into... Like how, just how peaceful these people were. Like we found weapons, like all the way from the Stone Age. And when they, the archaeologists dug up parts of Indian culture, like they found no weapons. Like these people are, from the very beginning weren't very weapon friendly. So number nine, what is the belief of ah Ahimsa? Ahimsa. Ahimsa. Alright, so you've got check for understanding at the bottom. List one important belief or practice of each religion. So just go back and just list one. Just one practice or belief. Alright. Okay, guys. I have to go. I have plans to go to the gym. And I have to cook dinner and have things to do. So um, I am so happy that you joined me this evening. I know we had a heart-to-heart -heart this evening. This... the. I know that we had a heart-to-heart -to -heart today about, you know, being prepared for class and doing our schoolwork and doing our homework and how we have a lot to cover and not a lot of time to cover it. And I think, I just really appreciate y'all taking the time out to come and watch this video and to do your homework 
and to learn about these awesome civilizations. I mean, honestly, this is, I think, I think this is really cool because I don't really know that much about India. So this is really cool to me too. I'm learning with y'all and not know a lot of this stuff. So um, anyway, so I think to see how many people actually watch this, I want you to write down on a piece of paper your name and I want you to write down one of your, what, what does kindness mean to you? Just take a minute. What does being kind mean to you? All right. Name, what does kindness mean to you? Describe kindness and turn it in for 10 bonus points tomorrow. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye.